Today I want to share with you five Cubase tips that I think you need to know. Hey, what's going on? Chris Hillam here from Mixdown Online. Now, if this is your first time here on this channel, subscribe and hit that notification bell. And again, share and like this video. Okay, now let's jump into our five Cubase tips that I actually use all the time. So let's start with tip number one move around the project window. Okay, so uh, very easy. I use my mouse wheel and my keyboard to just go around my project window. So if I use my uh, mouse wheel up and down, I'm just gonna go up and down my project window. If I keep my finger on shift, I am gonna go left and right, okay? So very simple, up and down, you click on shift and your mouse wheel will go left and right the project window. If I keep my finger on control or command on Mac, uh, it is gonna zoom in and out, okay? By still using the mouse wheel, okay? So control or command will zoom in and out, a shift, and the mouse wheel will uh, go left and right, and the mouse wheel by itself will go up and down. Okay, very easy to use and very practical, okay? Again, you can use similar stuff on the mix console if you want uh, with the mouse wheel. If you bring your cursor at the bottom of the mix console, just by using the mouse wheel, you're gonna go left and right the mix console, okay? Uh, but this tip is mainly for the project window. So that was tip number one, move around the project window. Now let's go to tip number two. Play from the beginning of an event. I had someone asking me the question about um, starting to uh, bring the playhead directly at the beginning of an event and start playing right away, okay? So this is something that can easily be done in Logic and that person is coming from Logic and new to Cubase. So let me answer your question about that. Uh, there's a few things you can do here if you wanna just uh, start to select an event and start playing right away at the beginning of that event. Uh, you can, let's uh, for example, select that one event, okay? Um, and just click on L, which is gonna bring, it's gonna locate the selection, okay? So it's gonna bring your playhead to the beginning of that selection, okay? And you click on play and it's gonna start playing from that point. Um, now, notice that my playhead goes back to the start position, okay? So when I click on stop, it goes back to that position by default, Cubase um, doesn't set it up this way. So if you wanna get that option, this is the, the way I always work. Uh, you just go into File and Preferences, and this is a bonus tip, by the way. Um, and you go into Transport right at the bottom here and click on a Return to Start Position on Stop, okay? So this way, your cursor, okay, your playhead is gonna go back to the Start Position. So if I uh, start my position right here and I click on Play, when I'm gonna click on Stop, it's gonna go back to that Start position, which brings me to the L function where it's gonna bring my playhead to the beginning of that selection, okay, that event. And if I click on play, um, it's gonna start playing from that point. And when I'm gonna click on stop, it is gonna go back to that start position. Now there's some other ways you can do so. I can right click, okay, on that event, go down to play project range and click on play from selection start. Um, what I did on my side, I created myself a shortcut, a key command to access that function faster. So on my side, if I click on shift and play, and so by selecting a uh, an event, it is gonna start playing at that point right away, okay? So if I, again, shift and play, uh, but you need to set that up in key commands, okay? Uh, right here on file key commands, uh, you enter the uh, the command itself and then you assign your, uh, your shortcut, uh, the shortcut of your choice, okay? So that's one way of doing it. Now the downside of that option, okay? So if I do it again, shift and play, it's gonna start playing from the beginning of that event, the one I selected. But if I click on stop, the return on start position will not work. I don't know why, but that's the way it is, okay? So that's one of the reason I just don't use that function a lot, but it's there, so it's just good to know anyways, okay? Then there's something else you can do, okay? You can select an event, and if you click on P, so that is gonna be another bonus tip. So if you click on, t on P, okay, it's gonna bring your locators, the left and the right locators, to the beginning and the end of that event, okay? But if you click on any event and select Alt or Option on Mac and the letter P, it's gonna, it's gonna set up the left and right locators and it's gonna start playing right away and loop that event at the same time. 
Okay, so this again is very practical if you want to just loop one section right away out of an event. You select it, you click on Alt or Option P, and there you go. It starts playing. Left and right locators are set up and it's playing in loop. Okay, so very cool feature here. So this is for my tip number two. Now for tip number three, access multiple edit windows. Okay, now to open an edit window, you need to double click on an event, okay, the event you wanna work on. So I'm gonna open this one by double clicking on it and it's gonna appear, the edit window will be at the bottom, okay, in the lower zone. Um, this is the way I set it up, okay? So you can uh, bring that as a full window if you want by clicking on the uh, right arrow or you can set it up so it always opens in a separate window. Okay, if you wanna do so, just click on file, go into preferences, editors, and then you just click on double click open editors in lower zone, just select the double click opens editor in a window. Okay, and this way when you double click, it's gonna be in the full window. So it depends on which option you uh, you wanna work with. Okay, so let's keep it this way for now. So let's say I wanna open several um, several edit windows, okay, or access to all of these, um, these uh, WAV files in the same edit window. I just select all of the events, okay, double click, and now they're all gonna be available right on top here, okay? So as you can see, if I click on the top right here, I see the file I am working on right now. If I wanna access the other file, just click on the selected uh, file I wanna work on and so on, okay? All of those events uh, are all available, okay? The one I selected, okay? So um, let's go for example, okay, you know what? Let me show you something pretty cool. Uh, very audio, okay, for pitch correction. Now that I selected all of those events, if I activate my uh, pitch and warp option here, I see all of those, okay? Uh, you see all of the tracks, the events I selected. I have the one in the foreground right here and all the other ones are in the background, okay? But if I click on one of them, um, I can access uh, this, um, this event easily and just work on the pitch correction uh, right away, okay? So it is very easy to edit especially back vocals and stuff. If you have like recording a bunch of vocals, uh, stack vocals, stack back vocals, uh, very easy if you wanna just pitch correct them um, all at the same time. Um, so it is a very cool way to do so. Now let's look at MIDI events. So the same applies for MIDI, okay? You just select the events you wanna work on. Uh, you double click or you just click on Control E and that will open your edit window. And again, you have access to um, all the, um, the events you have selected and they're all gonna be available right on top. Now I only selected two, so those two events are available within the same edit window. Now, there's some other way, okay? You can edit your MIDI. Um, by using the edit in place, which is a very cool feature here in Cubase. So if I select my MIDI track or instrument virtual track here where I have some MIDI notes, I click on Control Shift I or Command Shift I if you're on Mac, then I'm gonna see right away within the track my MIDI notes, okay? Uh, very, very useful, very practical. I can do the same for two tracks if I want to, okay? So if I decide to do the same with this one, uh, Control Shift, and I, and there you go. Now I have both of those MIDI tracks open at the same time. So I can have a look at them both at the same time right in front of me and uh, work with them right away. So uh, a few things you need to know here, okay? Um, if you look at the keyboard on the left, if you're using edit in place, um, I'm just gonna be quick on this one, but uh, w w once you get that hand uh, cursor, okay? Um, you can drag left and right with your mouse by click by left clicking and left and right, which will enlarge the MIDI notes, okay? or bring them more narrow, okay? And the same uh, same thing uh, applies with the the way you uh, you just uh, move up and down and left and right and zoom in and out. You just watch tip number one again and uh, it applies for this as well. Now on the top right here, if you click, you're gonna get the modifiers. If you shift click, uh, you're gonna get them as a moving window, okay? So pretty nice. Now, before I forget, if you wanna get off the edit in place mode, just do the same shortcut again, okay? Control Shift and I, you're gonna see your track to its original state. So this is another way you can access multiple edit windows, but this one works only with MIDI. Now for tip number four. Enlarge selected tracks. Okay, let me show you what I mean here, okay? So when I select the track, nothing much happens, okay? So if I go into File, 
preferences, I go into project and mix console. At the bottom, I click on enlarge selected track. Now what's gonna happen is every time I select a track, the track will be bigger. All the other tracks are gonna be the same size except the one selected. Okay, so I can resize that window if I want. And uh, every time I click on that track, that specific selected track will be larger than the other ones. So that's it for tip number four. Now let's jump to tip number five. Move around the lower zone. Okay, so now I have my lower zone open. Okay, I'm just going to make sure it is selected. Okay, so if I see um, that the lower zone is enlightened, that means it's selected. So if you want to be sure, just click on tab until you see that lower zone selected or just click on it. Okay, that's simple. Now, um, I have like some tabs at the bottom here, which brings me from the mix console to the editor window, the sampler control and chord pads. But there's a shortcut you can use to browse these windows. Okay, so just click on command option and the left and right arrow if you're on Mac or control alt and the left and right arrows if you're on PC. And that will um, bring you from the mix console to the editor, sampler control, and chord pads um, in a fast way. Okay, now when you're in the mix console, if you want to go, if you look at the left and you want to go from the mix, uh, from the faders to the, uh, the inserts and the sends, instead of just clicking on these options, you can keep your fingers again on command option or control alt and you click on up and down the up and down arrow and that will bring you from the faders to the inserts and sends okay um, so this is a very fast way to access these and again to jump from uh, the mix console editor window and so on all right guys so this is going to be it for today hopefully this video is going to be very helpful for you if so like and share this video and again if you're new here on this channel subscribe to the channel and don't forget to leave your questions and comments down below all right guys until next time see ya